Uh, good evening, my Lord. I'm my, my my name is Dr. Ritu Manwani. I'm from Shankara Hospital, Shimoga. Uh, today I'm going to present on scleral buckle. So what is scleral buckle? Uh, it indents the sclera in the overlying choroid retinal pigment epithelium complex towards the retinal break so that the adhesion will be formed between the uh, between the retina and the overlying sclera in the choroid retinal pigment epithelium. It is mainly indicated for uncomplicated rachmatogenous retinal detachments. Uh, coming to the history of the scleral buckle, uh, custodies link up and skeptons. They devised various ways of using episcleral and intrascleral implant uh, to form the scleral indent. Coming to the principles of scleral buckle surgery, it mainly consists of identification of all the breaks, creating a corioretinal adhesion and sealing of all the breaks. Uh, another uh, principle consists of re uh, relief of the vitreoretinal fraction. So identification of retinal breaks is the most important pre-operative assessment to be done in the cases of reti uh, retinal detachments because most of the cases of retinal detachment consist of more than one break and even if a single missed retinal breaks uh, forms an important cause for surgical failure. So the identification of the link ops uh, uh, of the breaks can be done by the link ops rule, which helps in localization of the primary break from the distribution of subretinal fluid. It states that uh, wherever the area of retinal detachment is more, there is more likelihood of presence of uh, retinal break in that area. Another principle consists of seal the break with retinopexy, which consists of diathermy, cryoretinopexy, and later laser photocoagulation. Nowadays, the cryoretinopexy is most commonly done. The laser photocoagulation cannot be done in scleral buckle cases because uh, photocoagulation can be, cannot be done in the detached retina. So coming to the common indications of scleral buckle surgery, it's mainly done in uncomplicated regmatogenous ret uh, retinal detachment up to proliferative vitreoretinopathy grade C2. Fresh regmatogenous retina detachment with single break, multiple breaks in single plane, and uh, retina detachment with retinal dialysis. So, the scleral buckle is mainly preferred in young patients with adherent posterior hyaloid and in the phakic eyes. Coming to other indications of scleral buckle, uh, it's, uh, nowadays it's used in, as a macular buckle in myopic traction uh, maculopathy in traumatic detachment in a child's eye in a retinal detachment associated with intraocular tumors, for example, retinoblastoma, uh, mainly when they are on radiotherapy. In this case, vitrectomy cannot be done because it may cause the spread of the tumor cells in retinal detachment with stage four of retinopathy of prematurity in ciliary body detachment, uh, which results in hypotony. So scleral buckle can help in increasing the intraocular patient pressure in such patients. Uh, in fellow eyes of non-traumatic uh, giant retinal tear cases, uh, the indications of combined buccal and vitrectomy are failed retinal detachment surgery, inferior re uh, recurrent detachment, and inferior detachment in fifth four shortened retina. And the relative contraindications of scleral buccal surgery. So the retinal detachment with uh, proliferative vitreo retinopathy grade more than grade C2, uh, extreme ret uh, scleral thinning, coloboma choroid associated retinal detachment, posterior retinal breaks, retinal detachment in pseudophagic eyes, combined traction retinal uh, retinal detachment and in post glaucoma surgeries complications of scleral buccal surgery consist of intraoperative and uh, postoperative so mainly uh, the disinsertion of extraocular muscles oculocardiac reflex lobe rupture scleral perforation fish mouthing of the retinal break postoperative complications consist of recurrent retinal detachment ptosis refractive error buccal infection glaucoma strabismus so the, nowadays the trend is going more towards vitrectomy because of the following causes, problems like lack of skill in using indirect ophthalmoscope, scleral buckle, buckle me being more painful procedure, uh, buckle, macular buckle, it is difficult to do and requires general anesthesia and a good assistant is required to do uh, scleral buckle surgery. Less visibility and scleral uh, related complications are more with uh, scleral buckle surgery. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Ritu, uh, yes, uh, so can you, uh, um, can I uh, know how, uh, see, you're doing a scleral buckling. So how do you, how do you really make sure that uh, uh, the uh, retina gets attached? You, know, you have explained, but uh, uh, tell me like, uh, the, it, uh, you cause, you cause inundation 
of uh, the sclera so so how, how do how do you make it uh, uh, the retina attached just just buckling or so if presence of uh, subretinal fluid is there that has to be drained ah um, subretinal fluid uh, uh, will always be there so how do you how do you drain it have you have, have you seen a uh, uh, buckling band yes sir so how how, uh, how does a retinal surgeon uh, uh, drain the flu fluid mm, so one like Okay, 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 okay. So, like, uh, uh, so, uh, 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 just tell me later, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 so, given a choice between uh, scale buckling, see, a, a case, uh, both are uh, eminently possible. You can do a scale buckling and do uh, via surgery. Uh, which one uh, should I uh, uh, prefer? So, depending upon the age of the patient and the uh, fake uh, status of the of the lens, if young patients and with fake eyes, may mostly with uh, uncomplicated recondition and detachment, scleral buckle to be preferred. But if in pseudo fake in old patients, uh, like pass plana vitrectomy to be preferred. Why? Because why? Why? Why no? Uh, uh, we are surgery in a, uh, a young patient. No, sir, uh, the progression of cataract and uh, the uh, PVD increases in young in young patients if you do vitrectomy. Uh, sure, okay. No, uh, All okay. right, Dr. Ritu. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, have you heard the term encirclage? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, what, what is the difference between a uh, Scleral buckle and is it both are same or it's different? Um, scleral buckle can be of two types: can be radial buckle or uh, uh, like circumferential. Circumferential consists of segmental and encirclage buckling. Okay, so it's usually when you do a yeah when you do a segmental uh, and when you do an encirclage, are you trying to address different pathologies? What what is the difference? Mm -hmm. So encirclage you mean is for 360 degree, right? And segmental you, depending on where is the break you put. Mm -hmm. So is there any difference between the two in their mechanism? Okay, that is fine. The next thing is like, uh, sir asked, no, how do you manage the subretinal fluid? Uh, what do you do to the subretinal fluid? Any drainage methods, anything? Man, fluid is used to drain. No, fluid is when you do internally, not when you do a buckle from outside. It's an external procedure, you know, from outside you do. Okay, no problem. And uh, you said uh, segmental and radial buckles. Yes, how do you decide which, there are different sizes of buckle, you know? Any step is there, how do you do decide which buckle to be put? Okay, fine. You you have not assisted many buckle surgeries, I suppose. It's okay, no problem. Uh, have you heard of retinal dialysis? Yes, ma'am. In a patient who has a retinal dialysis and an inferior retinal detachment, what is the better approach? Suppose a 15-year-old boy, post-trauma, retinal dialysis. Would you prefer buckle or would you prefer vitrectomy? I would prefer scleral buckle surgery. Okay, good. A good presentation. So one one point which you should say if you have a patient who you have done a scleral buckle for, uh, you are following up the patient. Uh, how would you know there is a buckle infection? I mean, what sign will you look for? So the so the buckle strands can be visible can be visible on an inferior segment examination. Uh, the discharge will be there. Yes, so there would be, there could be a buckle exposure. Oh, yes. yeah, and if it is subclinical, you will see a subconjunctival hemorrhage. So in any patient who has a subconjunctival hemorrhage, in a patient close, uh, near the buckle, in a patient who has had a buckle, uh, scleral buckle, you will suspect a 
subclinical uh, buccal lymph. Good, good presentation. Thank you, Dr. Ritu.